Hello, and in today's video we're doing something slightly different. It's time to get phrasal. Okay, so we're going to be going through some phrasal verbs. This video is dedicated to Chris. Thank you very much for the idea for this series, Chris. I'm going to be looking at lots of phrasal verbs that you will be finding in proficiency exams. Yeah, so phrasal verbs will drive any English student mad. They're very tricky to learn um, because one phrasal verb will often have many uses. Now in this series, as I said, it's really for those people who really want to push their English to the next level or for those people taking CAE, CPE or ECPE because these are hard phrasal verbs. The phrasal verbs are very very useful because native speakers use them a lot and this is why exams focus on them quite a bit as well and you'll always see phrasal uh, verbs rearing their ugly heads in the proficiency exams. Okay, so let's do it. So the first one, to back down. Alright, so if you are backing down, take a look at this picture. You can see here one of the players is all up in the referee's face or maybe the coach's face. Very heated argument. Both of these two obviously will not back down. So if you are backing down, you are basically conceding an argument. Kind of like retreating. You're kind of saying, okay, okay, you know, I made a mistake, you're right, I'm wrong, this is backing down. So, it's not an easy thing for some people to do, especially those people out there, <laughs> like me, who don't like admitting when they're wrong. Alright? It was a really bad disagreement because neither of them would back down. Then, <laughs> you're going to have fireworks to back out of. Okay, so if you are backing out of something, um, again, this is one with several meanings. Have a look at the picture here. Well, that's backing into. <coughs> but we do this with a car, yeah? Uh, hopefully not this exactly, but to back out of maybe our parking space, you are reversing. You're going backwards. The other thing you can back out of is an agreement or an arrangement you have with someone. So you may have said, okay, okay, we'll do it. And then at the final minute, you change your mind and you back out of the deal. So that's another meaning here. So as I've said here, to change your mind about a deal. They backed out of the business deal at the last minute. But remember, to back out of or back up, also in a car. All right, to blurt out. This is a good one. Um, if you blurt something out, usually you say it without thinking. So you've probably said something that you maybe shouldn't have. Oh, um, Like here. It reminds me of an idiom to literally let the cat out of the bag. If you let the cat out of the bag, you tell someone something that you shouldn't have told them. Maybe a friend of yours is having a surprise party and they ask you, oh, you know, what are you doing tonight? And you say, oh yeah, well, I'm coming to your party. You've just blurted something out. You've let the cat out of the bag. To say something without thinking, spontaneously, impulsively, I just blurted out the answer by mistake. Yeesh. To branch out. This is a beautiful one. I love this. So to branch out, just think of a branch. A tree branches out. It spreads. And this is kind of what this phrasal verb means, really. So to expand or diversify. So a business might branch out. In other words, expand or start selling more products. For example, our company has decided to branch out um, in shoes as well as selling clothes. So not only is it going to sell clothes, it's also going to start selling shoes now. Yeah? Alright, to break down. Now I'm sure, oh yes, most of us will know this one already. There is nothing worse than when your technological devices start breaking down. It drives you mad, okay? For example, 
the old manual washing of the clothes. Although, I have to say, this is rather innovative. <laughs> I wish I had thought of that when I was at university. <laughs> okay, so obviously their washing machine has broken down to stop working properly. Our washing machine has broken down again. Time for... Ooh, I hope you've got clean feet if you're doing that, but you can see <laughs> those clothes must be absolutely minging. The water's totally brown. Anyway, not advisable, but what are you going to do? To boil down to, this is a tricky one. It's actually quite tricky to explain as well. Um, and I've got a wonderfully vague picture as well. I just put this picture in because I found it and I love it. I mean, have a look at that picture. Someone's standing there on the ice. And I know which, in fact, I don't want to be either of these two people. It doesn't look too safe. But to boil down to uh, means to summarize something or condense something. Yeah, make it more compact. And of course, that means absolutely nothing to you. So let me give you an example. Basically, what it boils down to is, does he have enough air or shall we leave him down there? Yeah? So you're discussing whether this diver needs to come out now or not. What it boils down to. In other words, basically, yeah, um, tricky one to boil down to something. Maybe, let me give you another example because this one is tricky. Maybe your friend has a party, he invites you to the party, obviously you really want to go and you say to him, you know, listen, you know, listen Chris, I really want to come to your party, but what it boils down to is I really have too much work on at the minute. Yeah? Alright. To brush up on. Very, very common. Especially um, with a skill or a language. Okay, so if you're brushing up on, like you can see this guy here might be brushing up on his computer skills or brushing up on a particular maybe software program that he needs to use. Um, so there you go, to practice a language or a skill. I really need to practice my French because I haven't spoken French to years. To brush up on my French. To burn out. Oh yes, this is all too common these days with work and school and English exams. Sometimes you feel a little like this. <laughs> Your battery is dead. Okay, and that's what burnout means. Well, one of the meanings of it. To become exhausted. Another meaning is to be destroyed by fire, like in a burnt out uh, house. It means literally, you know, when all the, the house is burnt down and all the windows and everything are black. Or a burnt out car if there's rioting. Yeah. So, after studying all night, I really felt burnt out. In other words, you are you just can't get your engine started. Nothing worse. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful for you. If you like this, share it with your friends, subscribe, and I'll make more. Thanks for watching. Bye.